thank you very much for your introduction. Um, I'm going to talk today about our R&D activities in the area of chemical recycling, especially chemical recycling of plastic waste, the pyrolysis, and especially the downstream processing of pyrolysis oils. So my previous speakers already talked a lot about these uh, importance about chemical recycling and pyrolysis. So that's why I want to go really short through these next two slides. So the development of plastic waste in Germany is depicted here. And what we do see is that we have a very high amount of plastic waste that is going into energy recovery at the moment. And this is currently more than 50%. And we also already heard quite a lot about the reasons why this is occurring. So we have quite a lot of mixed plastics, high-tech composite material. We have impurities like gas. We have fibers, fiber reinforced plastics metal are inside, flame retardants, pigments, additives, and all these are reasons why quite a lot of plastic waste is going into incineration. However, we do see chemical recycling or we do see these feedstock as a potential feedstock for feedstock or chemical recycling. However, up to now, these remains very insignificant. So this is just a small blue bar here. Um, also, this slide here was described by my previous speakers quite a lot. So, uh, of course, pyrolysis is not the preferred uh, technology for recycling in general. However, if we have an um, increasing of impurities or contaminations in our plastic waste stream, then at some point it might be realistic to use the pyrolysis technology instead of just going into incineration. But also, therefore, we need to uh, really focus on not to use the pyrolysis oil as a fuel. So, because in that case, we don't go into a, a circularity, but we are producing out of these pyrolysis oil again, carbon dioxide. I think the focus should be on the uh, substitution of NAFTA, which then could go into a steam cracking unit, for example, to produce some uh, chemicals or monomers which then are, uh, can be used again for polymerization process. However, it's not that easy to go from pyrolysis oil into these steam crackers and where the problems are, this is something I want to talk today about. So yeah, as said, we see chemical recycling as an alternative for incineration and uh, after the depolymerization of plastic waste, we uh, obtain chemicals that could be recovered. And these chemicals or monomers can be recovered in uh, virgin quality. Also the products could be virgin-like. And if we are comparing these or the chemical recycling with incineration, we could achieve an increased circularity and a decrease of carbon dioxide emissions. So this is the target. So at Fraunhofer Umsicht, we are working with pyrolysis and we there have a screw reactor and this screw reactor is filled with different kinds of plastic waste. So we are experimenting with uh, lots of plastic waste like sorting residues. We also have carbon reinforced or uh, glass reinforced plastic waste shredder residue from electronic or automotive industry, but plastic waste in general. The material goes into uh, our reactor via a chamber system and the atmosphere is replaced uh, with nitrogen and we have temperature above 500 degrees. Under these conditions, we start with the depolymerization process. So the plastics uh, are depolymerized into smaller units, chemical units. And we are separating uh, composites and inorganic material from these plastic fractions via a screw uh, system and, up with a, and we end up with a solid product that is free of uh, organic material. We de then uh, have also a pyrolysis steam and gas and the steam is condensed, uh, giving some aliphatic and aromatic compounds. And the gas, for the moment, it is used uh, for energy recovery 
to uh, have an energy self-sufficient operation, but the gas can also be in future isolated. We have a so-called iCycle pilot plant at our institute, which is capable to uh, convert around 50 to 70 kilograms per hour of plastic waste. And yeah, to, uh, at the next, I want to uh, have a, a deeper look into the composition of our products. For example, the pyrolysis gas itself. So we have a very high heating value of around uh, 45 megajoule per kilogram. And the composition is uh, mostly CXHY, uh, so uh, alkanes, uh, with around 44%, but also quite a lot of methane. So these in general, uh, in total, are around 70%. Then we have around 18% hydrogen, which makes it a very interesting gas also if you are thinking about substituting uh, natural gas. So our concept and our recycling concept uh, is depicted on this scheme here. So I made here the example of shredded rotor blades. And what we do is a pyrolysis of such shredded material. And then we end up with pyrolysis oil. The pyrolysis oil can then be further treated, simply said by distillation, for example, to get out of these pyrolysis oil chemicals, like for example, phenol, benzene, toluene, styrene. And these chemicals could be used for further polymerization to a new plastic. But we are also working with the solid material in the case of uh, fiber reinforced plastics. We do some mechanical pro uh, physical process separation processes like sieving, flotation, or density separation, where we can end up with, for example, glass fiber or carbon fibers. And in this case, we are using these fibers for a foaming process to produce foam glass. But I want to focus a little bit more on the pyrolysis oil itself, because it's very important to understand what the composition of this pyrolysis oil is to see how to, uh, to go from the pyrolysis oil to a new product. And we did some analysis on the pyrolysis oil. In that case, we used, in my eyes, one of the most challenging waste streams in this case. This is uh, electronic waste, we triple e, uh, WEEE. And our analysis uh, showed that we have a very high heating value in the oil. However, if we have a look at the composition of the oil, we do see a very high amount of aromatic compounds. So we have up to 40% of styrene. We have quite a lot of ethyl benzene, toluene, phenol, and benzene. And in our eyes, these compounds are too valuable to use them for uh, energy recovery. So in our eyes, we think these chemicals should be first isolated and the rest could go, for example, into steam crackers, but should not be used as a fuel or for energy recovery. However, one of the main problems, especially in this kind of plastic waste, is the high amount of halogens. So <clears throat> in this input material, we had first uh, halogen content uh, or chlorine content of around 1.3%. And after pyrolysis, we decreased the amount of chlorine to 0.1%. However, this is still too much. So for steam crackers or in chemical industry, we need to achieve around yeah, uh, 10 ppm of uh, chlorine. So this is the target, but this is very hard to achieve. That's why we are investigating at Fraunhofer Umsicht new technologies, how to achieve these uh, lower contents of halogens. So in our eyes, this is the key step to close the value chain to go from uh, to a, a direct processing of pyrolysis oil in chemical industry and to produce new plastics. So how could look, uh, this look like? So. What we are developing at the moment is a so-called molten polyolefin reactor. 
And in this molten polyolefin reactor, we are conducting our pyrolysis steam. And the polyolefins are acting here as hydrogenation reactions. So they are hydrogenating the uh, organic bounded halogens, producing HCl, or in case of brominated compounds, HBr, which then can be uh, separated as we are condensing the uh, oil and the gas, the HCl and the HBr is going into the gas phase. So we do see a significant halogen reduction after this uh, process and our oil can be close to be free of halogenated organic compounds. However, we still have some inorganic bounded compounds inside the pyrolysis oil and these can be removed by, for example, emulsion separation. So all the water and salts, like metal chlorides in this case, can be removed. And having a water and salt free product in the end, we removed all the inorganic bounded halogens as well. After that, we go into uh, distillation and fractionation of the pyrolysis oil and we can get fractions like aliphatics, aromatics, or wax. So in our labs, this looks like that. So we have a rectification column. And after the rectification of uh, the pyrolysis oil, so here, this black one, this is the pyrolysis oil. And we end up with several fractions, which are uh, made of uh, benzene, toluene, we have a mixture of styrene and ethyl benzene. We have some phenol fractions and we have a naphthalene fraction. And these fractions are pure, so more than 90% uh, purity already. Uh, however, our target is to go into higher purities and the amount of halogens in these chemical fractions at the moment is lower than 100 ppm and our target is to lower this also uh, to more than uh, to less than yeah 50 or target is 10 ppm so as an outlook what we are doing for the next steps is to do this also on up uh, to upscale these technologies we do not want to uh, show this only in lab scale but also in larger scale we built such a uh, uh, molten polyolefin reactor in larger scale for our pilot plant, which we are connecting soon. And we also build up a hydrogenation uh, plant in our, uh, at our institute to compare the hydrogenation with these polyolefin reactors or to even hydrogenate at the end some of our products to get even better results. So this is a short overview of our R&D activities and thank you very much for your attention.